Uh, good. What were we babbling about? Um, I have to remember what the things I've forgotten about. So we've covered new thingy phaser, new tempo ratios, toggles. Oh, I fixed a bug that many people had been vexed by that if you press both of these together, oh well, sometimes it would think you would press both of them together um, when you actually hadn't. Um, so that's fixed now, the, the pressing both of them together issue. There's a couple of other bug fixes that people had reported that I fixed. Um, yeah, you can definitely do some great stuff now with the tempo ratio with the delays. Obviously, you can still set the times in here for the ratios when you've got it set to beats. You can still do the these times. Um, but you can do it as well with the um, tempo ratio now, which just gives you a bit more um, variety. Uh, are you talking 2.43? Uh, no. They're talking 2.44. The 44th release this year. Yeah, so 44s was up uh, a couple of days ago. So, um, yeah, grab that one. Just put on USB, put it in. Uh, so, yeah, the new stuff is, yeah, just a few few bug fixes. Tempo ratio, new phaser, flan new phases. Um, the, what's it called? Toggle, uh, and perhaps some other things that I forgot about. Um, I have to glance at. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna glance at the change list for a second to see if I remember what anything else that was. Uh, yeah, my giant to do list. I think that was the main thing. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah, and poly midi. I forgot about that one. Um. So yes, there's now a preset that shows you how to use um, polyphonic um, MIDI in, so basically doing chords. That's in there now, and it actually works. So I fixed the polyphonic um, MIDI in. You can't have a poly pedal without poly. Um, so yeah, that's in now. Um, I've actually also been testing, uh, a few people asked previously about USB um, MIDI. And I've been testing that, and it's actually pretty close to um, working now. So yeah, uh, I think in the next week I'll probably have USB MIDI fully functional. Um, I've only currently got MIDI in working from USB MIDI, because that's the only thing I've currently been testing. Um, MIDI out should work the same. To begin with, it's just going to use the same um, MIDI in and out nodes, um, well, like modules here. Um, I don't know if that should be split out in future just so you can have different things going to the MIDI, the USB ones, and different things going to the normal, the 3.5mm MIDI in and outs. So that's something that's planned for the future stuff. Um, Alright, back to other questions. Uh, uh, are you likely to put in the... Are you likely to put the power amp models back rather than the full amp models? Uh, I don't know. Um, the power amp models kind of sound garbage by themselves, is the problem. And then people use them by themselves and they're like, these power amps sound garbage. And you're like, yes, yes, they do. Um, you really need to run them with the preamp. Um, I'm wondering maybe I should just do one of those modules that has a... Dis, uh, where you can just disable the preamp to it and so you can run it just as the power amp but by default it's both just um, so it's actually still you know sounds good to everybody and then if you press a button to make it sound terrible then it's a bit more um, understandable that it might sound terrible after you press some button um, but yeah if that's something if that's something you need. I'm actually, yeah, so obviously um, amp modeling isn't a big focus of the pedal. I, I kind of added those in because I needed to show something, because I needed some um, way to show it on headphones at um, NAMM. And now, because uh, of the whole ISO stuff, 
I actually spend a bit of time playing through headphones now. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely, um, I think, handy for everybody to have a bit more of that. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an option. Um, if I have... Um, yeah, uh, uh, I'm thinking of having a few more things along the, the, the power amps side. Um, if I can do anything interesting in there. I think there are other pedals that focus really strongly on the um, the amp modeling stuff. Uh, and I just think that I've probably got... I can, I'm going to do a few bits on amp modeling to get the basics over. Um, and then, you know, if you want something super specific, like, you know, they're, they're, I don't think it'll get to the stage of, you know, things like the Kemper. Um, as far as profiling, things like that. At least not in any of the, you know, the near future. Um, just because it will require me to sit down and do some maths to do that kind of stuff. Uh, well, um, how to set up ducking? We should do it. We should run through that at some point. Um, that is also kind of fun. Uh, I can glance through the the polyphonic MIDI is actually that's the only other new thing in this, and that's um, easy to set up. You just there's just the the four different outputs, um, and just connect them to different uh, audio sources to different oscillators. Any plans to visualize con uh, modulations from control modules? Um, yes. Yes, I desperately want that, it's partly so it'll make videos where I'm showing things much easier, because um, then I can just be like, hey, look, this thing is doing this thing. Um, but actually, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very useful um, for me and for everybody else just to be able to see what's going on with all of the control value stuff. And it's just a good way to work out, oh, I'm changing this level, LFO through this loo limiter, what does it do? Um, it would make things much easier for that. Um, especially if it's like confusing and working out, oh, this really short thing isn't doing what I expected it to because the ADSR isn't, you know, that kind of stuff is um, really handy. Uh, yeah, that will be added. Um, some of the fiddly things with that is that obviously the audio, the control value stuff can be up to audio rate. Uh, so, you know, it can be happening, um, you know, 48,000 times per second. So obviously it has to be, um, if you've just got a single value showing you what the current value is, that's not necessarily very useful. It'll have to be some kind of graph, um, you know, some kind of oscilloscope visualization. Um, and nice little oscilloscope visualizations just uh, take a while. Um, so that's why I haven't focused on it yet, just because I thought I'd get the, you know, more audio focused stuff first and then focus on some more of the visualization. Um, it is something I want to do. Um, and I've got a bit of spare, um, GPU power in the pedal, so we can do some, some, some pretty visualization stuff. Um, it's just, yeah, focusing on, on what takes up, uh, CPU time and stuff like that, as far as audio stuff goes. Um, so maybe I'll just do a really, I can do a really basic patch just right now with the tempo ratios because they're kind of, you can get a really, some really fun delays. I'll just duplicate this guy. I'll just show you this before I go on to some more um, exotic and entertaining stuff. Um, so it's also absolutely freezing in my workshop today. So I'm well, in my shed. It's five degrees this morning. So maybe that's why the stream was broken earlier. It was frozen. So I'm just going to chuck some of these delays up here. Connect this guy up. And then... Connect this BPM out to this one. So now we're going to have this these ones in this different ratio. Obviously, nothing super exotic, but... You can get some fun stuff with this. 
Um, and I'll tap that to be. And now the phaser should be in the time with that as well. Oh, that's the wrong one. This one. That's kind of fun. So you've got the everything working in time with each other there. You've got the phases and the delays. Get some. So yeah, I'm pretty... Uh, the tempo ratio stuff's actually, you know, really straightforward, but it's it's quite a lot of fun. Uh, next question, does it, does it currently show when a parameter is being modulated? Uh, no, it does not. There is no visualization because yeah, those can happen as, as, at, as fast as, well, very speedily. So no, um, there's no visualization currently. You don't, can't see anything if that's happening. Um, which is confusing. Um, our illustrious designer Joe has come up with a nice little like logos and stuff uh, and icons for sorry word not logos um, icons for showing when things are being modulated. So I'm going to add those in, um, and then it's going to be a bit a little bit clearer. Hey, this thing's got the little puppet icon. It's being modulated by something else. Can you modulate an LFO with another LFO? Um, let's try. Um, there's a couple of ways to do that kind of thing. If you want to modify an LFO, look, right now I'm running it through the, sl the slew limiter, so I am modifying that in an interesting way. But if you want to modulate an LFO with another LFO, um, uh, I'll show you how to do that. So let us grab... Um, so we can ring mod the two together if you want to oscillate the if you want to modulate one with another one, and that's easy because we just grab an attenuverter and we will just dis disconnect this guy from here. Uh, but uh, it's really hard to use without looking at the screen. There we go. Um, yep. So we'll connect that one up to the uh, attenuverter first. So we've got one LFO going into A, and we'll duplicate this LFO. So we'll just hit here, whack the duplicate button. Now with extra LFO. And did I run that into B or A? I can't remember. A, all right. So we'll run this one into B. Now we've got the two mod the, the two LFOs uh, basically modulating each other because they're both running through this attenuverter, so they're getting ring modded together. And now they're running into the slew limiter. Uh, and now we can get to some slightly more craziness. So yeah, you can run those type two in together like that. And you could even have them as a tempo ratio if you wanted to. Actually, hell, I'll do that too. Hold tempo. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you've got those now in that... So the two LFOs are now modulated against each other. So obviously there's a lot of different um, control value stuff that you can combine like that, either using things like the attenuverters, um, the slew limiters. Maybe you could run one of them in to trigger an ADSR if you wanted to do it like that. Um, because you, because yeah, you could just make something trigger when it gets to to the top of the, you know, to a full value. Use them as triggers. Any of those options. Or now you could set them up to the toggles as well, so you could have some of them toggling. Um, so yeah, that's all good. Uh, what other questions have I missed? So yeah, uh, oh, I uh, just, if anybody's got any other questions, otherwise I will load up one of the uh, other new crazy presets. Uh, this one's star grabbing bonkers. So, I just was trying to show off some of the new uh, control stuff and kind of try and control some modules that I don't usually use in this kind of way. So, yeah, this one's a bit, it's a bit visually intense. But hopefully you can see a bit of what's going on and see some of the new modules in use. Um, so we've got toggles here, tempo ratios, um, the attack decay envelopes with levels that I were added in relatively recently. That was a couple, maybe last firmware update or the wet before. And we've got a wet dry in here as well. So I've got a big collection of relatively new modules. Um, and it's kind of fun sounding. Um, it's a bit intense though. Let's try and put the guitar in front of the camera. So you see that that one's um, using the toggle, the new toggle mode module, that's what I meant, the new toggle module to uh, toggle a turntable stop effect. So you can, you'll be able to hear that, you know, turntable stop stopping, um, and that's happening based on this toggle. So that's the, you know, one of the new modules as well. Showing off how to, so yeah, the, the the toggle just lets you you know have things on or off based on the previous trigger, so anything used to trigger can control them. And then if you want, you can create more complicated um, sets of them. If you want to do something really weird, like this one turns on and this one turns off and this one turns on, you can actually do that pretty easily by just using the maths. Um, control voltage stuff. Um, so there's ones for doing ands, ors, and um, inversions. So you can have have any compli complicated collection of things turning off when other things turn on. Um, whether you want to do that from switches or from uh, from things like this, like a, like a trigger. Uh, so, is there any other I, oh, I have to show ducking. That's the other one. I... Otherwise, um, if anybody's got any other questions, I'll show off ducking. Obviously, sorry, there was a big bit of uh, random technical bits in the middle of this stream, but I'll show off ducking and then um, we'll otherwise we're probably pretty good for today's stream. Um, uh, other stuff is some... I'll just start from empty, actually.